Greetings, fellow mathematicians. We're gonna go through four simple problems on applying the chain rule with exponential functions. The four problems are written off to the side here, and let's go ahead and get to the first one. Now, I'm gonna assume that you're comfortable with applying the chain rule. If not, check out the videos I have linked down below in the description before going through these problems. Now, our first step in applying the chain rule is we wanna identify the outer and inner functions. Here, we have 2x inside of the exponential function. So we'll take our inner function, g of x, to be 2x. The outer function, f of x, will be e to the x. So let's write that down. f of x will be e to the x. And g of x, 2x. We're going to calculate the individual derivatives. f prime comes out to e to the x. And when we differentiate our inner function, the derivative of 2x, that's just 2. So g prime comes out to 2. All right, now we have all the pieces, and the first step in applying the chain rule is we combine them back together with f prime of g of x. So in other words, g of x, we're going to plug it into f prime here. Now, like the previous videos, which again are linked down below in the description there, I always like to, in the beginning, take f prime of x and rewrite all x's in it with open parentheses. So you can think of this as e raised to something. And now when we plug g of x into f prime, g of x goes right inside those open parentheses. And that's the first part of the chain rule, f prime of g of x. So let's write that down. We get our derivative y prime as f prime of g of x, so e to the 2x. And that's, again, your f prime of g of x term. And in the end, we just multiply by g prime the derivative of our inner function. And that's it. So this 2, that represents g prime. And we can clean this up a little bit. Generally good practice to take factors here and put them in front of exponential functions. So we can write that as 2 times e to the 2x. And that's it. Let's go ahead and get to problem 2. The next two problems are very similar to problem 1. The only change will be the inner functions. Now, we're going to keep some of the work the same here because it's going to allow us a chance to identify patterns, which is always good to point out in the beginning of Calculus 1 where you're getting comfortable calculating derivatives. So our outer function is still e to the x, and the derivative of e to the x is still e to the x. We're just going to identify our inner function, g of x, basically as whatever's in the exponent of e. And here, our inner function is x squared minus 3x plus 1. We just need to calculate g prime, and that's going to be really simple. That comes out to 2x minus 3, and now we just combine the pieces back together. Our first part is we're going to take g of x, plug it into f prime, but notice the pattern here, g of x, that goes up in the exponent of the exponential function there. So your first term in the derivative after applying the chain rule is we get e raised to g of x, e to x squared minus 3x plus 1. And that is your f prime of g of x term. Your last step, we multiply by the derivative of the inner function. And here, that's 2x minus 3. And that is g prime. And that's it. Like problem one, I always think it's good practice and good notation to take any factors and put them in front of the exponential function. I found some students that have sloppy handwriting might confuse this factor as multiplying x squared minus 3x plus 1. So avoid that temptation. Take these factors at the end here, pull them out front. So we can rewrite this as 2x minus 3 times the exponential function e to the x squared minus 3x plus 1. 
and that's it. Let's go ahead and get to problem three. The only change, we're going to have a different inner function. Now that we observed the pattern from problem two, problem three should be really simple. The only change here is our inner function is now sine of x. So we'll write g of x as sine of x. And our outer function is still e to the x. We're going to calculate the derivative of our inner function. The derivative of sine of x, that's cosine of x. And that's basically it. At this point, you're probably getting comfortable in combining things back together. You take g of x, plug it into f prime here, and that amounts to taking sine of x and plugging that up in the exponent of the exponential function. And that's our first term. We get e raised to the sine of x. And that is your f prime of g of x term. And the last step, we multiply by g prime, and here that's cosine of x. And that's it. We can clean up our answer a little bit. Standard practice and good notation might be to take factors at the end here and bring them in front. And we could write this as cosine of x times e to the sine of x. Now this presents another problem with notation. It's not at all clear sometimes with what factors are multiplying there. And there's a common confusion with thinking that the exponential function is being multiplied by x there, which is not. Here, the first part, that's cosine of x. x is inside of the cosine function. And one way to clear that up and avoid that confusion is to put parentheses around the x there. Use function parentheses. So you might write this as cosine of x and then times that exponential function, e to the sine of x. And you might also write it to be consistent with a set of parentheses around the x there in sine of x. And all three of those mean the same thing. Just be careful. That's probably standard notation in your Calculus 1 course. But sometimes for clarity and to avoid confusion, you might want to write it like this. Now, problem 3 was very similar to problem 2 and problem 1. Let's get to problem 4, which looks a little bit different. We're going to start this problem by applying one of our best tips for calculating derivatives. Rewrite before you differentiate. And here, we can rewrite this as e raised to the negative 3x power. And that allows us to avoid using the quotient rule and instead go through a simple application of the chain rule. Our outer function is, again, e to the x. But our inner function, g of x, that's now negative 3x. Your derivatives are really simple here. f prime is e to the x. And g prime, that's negative 3. And we just need to combine the pieces back together. The first part for the chain rule, we get f prime of g of x. You're probably already comfortable with this. Take g of x, plug it into f prime there, and we get e raised to the negative 3x. And that is f prime of g of x. Last part, we multiply by g prime, which is just negative 3. And that's it. With practice, this can go really quick. We're just going to rewrite that and put the negative 3 factor in front. And we get our derivative. And that's it. Now, these were all simple applications of the chain rule involving exponential functions. We're going to have linked down below more problems that are also simple 
but combinations involving trig functions. So go ahead and check that out. Hope you enjoyed this video and all the problems in it. I hope you're learning a lot. If you are, support the channel, like and subscribe.